Today's coaster review is of Nighthawk at Carowinds. This is one of the three Vekoma flying coasters in the United States, the other two being Firehawk at Kings Island and Batwing at Six Flags America. I'll be reviewing this coaster using several different categories, and that is including an overall score that I'll give at the end of the video. Nighthawk has the capability of earning a maximum score of 10 for each one of these categories. Let's see how well it does. First up, let's talk about the duration of the ride. Nighthawk lasts about a minute and 50 seconds. That is actually not too bad. The length of the ride is actually pretty good. I'm giving Nighthawk a solid 6. I'd call its length above average. Next up is the speed, and Nighthawk's speed is average. I'm giving it a 5. Its maximum speed is 51 miles per hour. Flying coasters aren't known for going super fast, so this is pretty typical. Next is how tall Nighthawk is. Nighthawk's maximum height is 115 feet. Again, fairly average for a roller coaster this size, so Nighthawk is getting another 5. And this next category is really going to bring Nighthawk down. It is the smoothness category. Nighthawk is a pretty shaky coaster. You're bouncing all over the place. I'm giving Nighthawk a 2. This coaster is manufactured by Vekoma, and they are known for creating rides that aren't very smooth. However, I've ridden flying coasters by Vekoma that are smoother than this. Batwing at Six Flags America was way less shaky than Nighthawk was. And because they're the same type of coaster with almost the same layout, I'm confused of why Nighthawk's smoothness is so different from Batwing's. And the smoothness, in my opinion, is a huge part of this coaster. I came off of Nighthawk with a headache. Anyway, so you get the point. Moving on is the transitions category. This category kind of goes hand in hand with smoothness. And Nighthawk does not transition from one element to the next very smoothly. I mean, it's okay. It definitely could be way better. I'm giving it a 5. I've definitely seen worse. It doesn't really jerk you into the maneuvers, but it's not smooth either. Next up is how good the drop is. Nighthawk actually has a fairly decent drop. I like how when you're going up the lift hill, you're facing the sky, and then it inverts you, and then you fly down, and you're directly facing the ground. That is cool. Again, I'm not crazy of its smoothness, but the way that it has that drop is pretty neat. I'm giving Nighthawk a 6. Next is how intense this coaster is. This coaster has some fairly intense moments. The best part of this coaster, in my opinion, is the vertical loop. You pull some pretty good G's there, and I love how you're being flipped from facing the sky to facing the ground, and then you're down facing the sky again. That is definitely the most intense part of this coaster. It's very fun. The rest of the coaster pulls some decent G-forces. Overall, I'm giving Nighthawk another 6 for this category. Next up is the inversions. Nighthawk takes you upside down several times. You first go upside down when you're exiting the lift hill. Then you also have that vertical loop, which I mentioned earlier, which is very awesome. And then its final inversions is a double corkscrew. The inversions are okay. The best element is the vertical loop. I'm not huge on the corkscrews, so I'm giving Nighthawk a 5 for the inversions category. Next is the theming category. Nighthawk basically has no theming. It's supposedly themed to a bird because you feel like you're flying, but there isn't really any theming around the coaster at all, so I'm giving Nighthawk a 1. Next up is the restraints category, and with these Vekoma flying coasters, you get some very strange restraints. When you first enter the coaster car, you have to pull these restraints over you on each side of your shoulders that hook you up, almost like a really beefy jacket. And then they pull down a lap bar over you that also secures your shins. These restraints are very big and not the most comfortable, but in order to prevent you from falling out, they have to have a lot of restraints. But there are definitely better restraints on these flying coasters. On the B&M flyers, you have much more comfortable restraints. I'm giving Nighthawk a 4. The restraints are okay. I think that they could have done better. So now it's time for the final overall score. This is not an average of all of the previous scores, this is strictly how much I like the ride. I'm giving Nighthawk a 4. Listen, I tolerate this ride, it's okay. The best part of this ride is that you feel like you're flying, you're dangling below the track facing the ground. That is a great element, but because the ride is so rough and shaky, it really takes away from the experience. It really is not the most enjoyable coaster at Carowinds. I've ridden a good Vekoma flying coaster. I don't understand why Nighthawk isn't as good as, say, Batwing at Six Flags America, which is the same coaster type, almost the exact same ride. However, even that coaster is better than Nighthawk. Maybe it's the way Carowinds treated it. I don't know. However, I personally am just not a huge fan of Nighthawk. In my opinion, this is one of those coasters that you ride once and then you don't need to ride again. You ride this coaster for the gimmick and that's about it.